Have you ever wondered why your car gets so hot in the middle of a sunny afternoon? Um, I've experienced that before. I unfortunately have a dark interior. So as you remember from the last module, um, dark things absorb more sunlight. That makes it even worse. But have you ever wondered why it is that your car gets so hot, the interior of your car gets so hot in the middle of an afternoon? Well, it all comes down to this phenomenon known as the greenhouse effect. So oops, let me go back to that. So here's how it works. Um, so there are these objects called selective absorbers. A selective absorber is something that is completely transparent to one type of radiation while being absorbent or opaque to another type of radiation. Well, the windows on your car are a perfect example of a selective absorber. The windows on your car end up allowing sunlight to just pass right through, which is actually a good thing, seeing as the bulk of sunlight is visible light and you wanna be able to see what's around you, right? Um, you don't wanna, you wanna be able to see the car next to you, the car in front of you, the car behind you, any unsafe road conditions, like you wanna see that. But the negative side effect of that is that all of that heat from the sun is also able to get through into your car. Your car then absorbs it, the interior of your car, then absorbs that heat, warming up, and that results in your car giving off more energy. However, just like Earth, the type of energy that your car gives off is different than the type of energy it gets from the sun. The type of energy your car gives off is what is referred to as long wave radiation. Um, and those windows, which were oh so transparent to shortwave radiation, are oh so opaque, oh so absorbent to long wave radiation. So what ends up happening is that as that heat tries to escape your car, the windows absorb it and radiate quite a bit of it back down to your car. This keeps heat trapped inside your car and it keeps you nice and roasty and toasty. Well, greenhouse gases are basically like the windows in your car. They are selective absorbers, which once again, a selective absorber, kind of like a selective listener only listens to some things and not others. A selective absorber only absorbs some wavelengths of radiation while being completely transparent to others. Um, what this does though is when you have a selective absorber, it allows some radiation to pass right through it and it absorbs other radiation. Greenhouse gases in particular are just like the windows in your car. They're transparent to shortwave radiation. So sunlight, for the most part, there are some exceptions, sunlight for the most part is able to make its way right on through. That's good because that heats our earth up. However, those same greenhouse gases are also absorbent to the radiation that the earth gives off, the long wave radiation that the earth gives off. And what this does is this allows a lot of that long wave radiation to be absorbed by those greenhouse gases, heating them up, and then re-emitted back down to the surface of the earth, keeping the surface of the earth nice and roasty and toasty. Um, and this is actually what keeps Earth warm. The reason why we call it the greenhouse effect is because it works just like a greenhouse. Um, if you've ever been to a greenhouse before, it's basically a giant glass room. And the reason why it's a giant glass room is because sunlight needs to be able to get in so that the plants inside can actually get sunlight, they can actually grow with sunlight, they can perform photosynthesis. Um, so it is a necessary thing. And then also all of that sunlight that comes in keeps the room at a relatively mild temperature. That's good because otherwise many of the places where there are greenhouses wouldn't actually be able to have these kind of plants and that would be boring. Um, so greenhouses are a good thing. And I will go ahead and for the record, as a climate alarmist, as somebody who's actually really frightened 
by the threat of climate change, I will go on record and say greenhouse gases are a good thing. They are a good thing. You, you, you can hold me to that in court. Greenhouse gases are a good thing. But why are we so worried about them? Well, think about your favorite food. Um, pizza, ice cream, hot dogs, sushi. Imagine if you ate that food every single day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Even the most diehard pizza fan would get sick of pizza. Even the most diehard sushi fan would get sick of sushi. Why? Because too much of a good thing. Well, that is what is happening with the greenhouse effect. We have too much, too many greenhouse gases. But greenhouse gases are misunderstood friends in so many ways. The reason why is without greenhouse gases, it would be substantially colder than it is currently. Um, Earth's average temperature right now is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Without greenhouse gases, Earth's average temperature would be as low as zero Fahrenheit. Now this is not a perfect solid example because that, that change in temperature would not be evenly distributed, but just do this as a thought exercise. Look at what the temperature is outside right now. Pull up your phone, um, pull out your weather app, look at what the temperature is outside. Now subtract 59 degrees from it. It would be a noticeably different condition. It would be a noticeably different temperature. Um, right now, as I'm recording this, my weather station outside says it's 53. So it'd be negative six. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced negative temperatures in Fahrenheit. That is cold. Um, so yeah, greenhouse gases make Earth mild and they make it habitable. So yay, greenhouse gases. But once again, the problem is too much of a good thing. 